We are excited to add the ability to incorporate one or more recurring costs to a project. We've heard from partners that many times a project associated with net new assets or users will often add new MRR to their contract. Or replacing an existing server with a cloud server will eliminate a device cost yet add MRR. So we're going to build a project to do both of those things. We're going to take a look at the project itself, what that looks like in the budget forecast, some new functionality in the roadmap, and how to change that recurring cost in a project to a contract. Page, the first thing you will find is that we have a new column for recurring cost. Um, we'll talk about how that lands here as we build the project. So let's go build our new project. I'm going to add project dates, but note this is the project as it applies to the assets I'm going to replace in this particular project. So maybe in this project, I'm going to go grab a couple workstations that we will be replacing. But along with those replacements, um, I might have some additional recurring charges that I want to add to the project. So I'm going to save the project. And you'll note that above the linked assets, there's a new recurring cost field. I'm going to click into the drop down, and I will say this is some addition to the managed service agreement that we have. You can choose to enter an account location. Uh, the impact starts is not specified, but you can change that to low, medium, or high and add a description. You need to choose a billing cycle, so how often we need to push this cost to the budget forecast and the cost. So we're going to add $200 of MRR and a beginning and end date. Now the important part of this is when the MRR begins. So I'm going to choose October 1st, even though the project's done in September. We're not going to start billing them for their MRR until the end of the until the beginning of the next month. And I'm going to extend that out for a year. So that is what we'll project into the budget forecast. So if you're planning on extending this charge, maybe you have a three-year contract on it, then go ahead and extend it all the way through. So I'm going to click Save, and you'll now see that the estimated project cost stays the same because the project is the one-time event. The recurring costs are down below, also highlighted for easy visuals of $200 monthly. So I'm going to go add an imaginary server that I want to, to replace, but I don't want to replace it with a, another server. So I'm going to uncheck replace to remove the cost because I'm going to add a, a, ser, a hardware as a service item in my recurring costs. Before I do that, I want to save that so my asset saves. And then I'm going to click into new recurring cost. And this time we're going to add a hardware as a service uh, type and this is going to be billed annually and instead of having to replace a ten thousand dollar server or whatever it is I'm going to put in twelve hundred dollar cost for servers I'm going to again start next month but I'm actually going to extend this for three years um, because it should last at least that long right uh, this contract so I'm now going to see two different lines for recurring costs, hardware as a service plus the new MRR, one annual, one monthly, the assets that are involved with all of those. I will save this project and now when we download the doc we will see it updated with the new information. And you can see that we have the monthly recurring cost, the annual recurring cost, all of our assets listed and note the one the server that we're not replacing um, is going to be uh, eliminated in terms of replacement cost. The project replacement cost and recurring cost pushes right into the project list along with a total cost for the lifetime of the contract that you had pushed into the project. Now let's take a look at what that does with the budget forecast. For the budget forecast, the projects 
will fold into the quarters where they were assigned. So you can see here the cost of the projects. And in that newest project, the replacement cost fell into the September, the July to September 2020 category. But in October through December, you can see it picked up the monthly and annual recurring cost. So the cost for the recurring charges will fall into the quarters where they would land and the project will, will be based on its own due dates. So it does separate it uh, and it pulls any of the project replacement costs from their original, from their original fields. So that's how it is impacted in the budget forecast. Let's take a look at the project's roadmap. So the project roadmap, of course, tracks all of your projects across the next four quarters. Uh, so here we've added some reporting options. I'm going to click into the gear and change reporting options, and I can eliminate or multi-select categories but most importantly, we've added recurring to the bottom. So if I wanted to see just my recurring charges, I click recurring and hit close, and I now get summaries across all of my clients for all of the quarters for the recurring charges. I can go back into the gear and add back each of the other categories so I get the full amount. And as always, I could choose just maybe the last client that I was working on so I can see all of the upcoming projects do. So we have rolled this right into Project Roadmaps. As well. Let's take a look at what happens to those recurring charges when the project is finally completed. So here we are in the project we made just a bit ago with MSA services and hardware as a service but we've gone from proposed, the client accepted it, and now that project is complete. So I'm going to choose completed, hit save project, and when I do, I'm being given this pop-up. You've marked this project as completed. You have recurring costs associated to this project as outlined below. Would you like to convert these to contracts? As a note, you can always do this manually by clicking into the recurring cost inside the project itself and hit the convert to contract button. So if you say no and want to look around or adjust, you can do that. But I'm going to say yes, convert this to a contract. When I do, you will see that it is no longer inside the project because the project is complete. I'm going to hit save project and now I'm going to go take a look on my contracts page and you can see that I had MSA services that was $200 monthly and hardware as a service that was $1,200 manually that have been pushed to the contracts. So that's a really easy way um, for it to continue beyond the project once it's complete and you can always go and edit the details further as this contract continues. We hope you enjoy all of this functionality. We know many of you have asked. As always, we would appreciate your feedback. Info at lifecycleinsights.io. Happy life.